All right, so in the previous lesson, we saw how to take this basic height field that we have created and then convert it into like a fully finished shader using Substance Painter and Alchemist. So in this lesson, we'll do a variation of it and we'll do the same thing in Quixel Mixer. So the reason for covering Quixel Mixer is because it's free. Okay, so for those of you who don't have Substance Painter or Alchemist, you know, or that entire suite, you can always use Quixel Mixer. Now, the only problem with Mixer is that you can't do baking in it. Okay, like what Substance Painter does, which is one of the reasons why I think it's, uh, it's much more convenient to use Substance Painter. But if you don't have Substance Painter, then uh, you do have the baking tools available inside of, uh, you know, inside of Houdini. So you can firstly, you know, bake off, bake your height field data from the height field output node. And then if you want to bake additional data, like you want to bake ambient occlusion or thickness or cavity maps or something like that, then you get like a labs, uh, if you type in bake. Yeah, so you'll get the labs maps baker. Okay. And what you need is, uh, you know, I have my, my terrain, which I have converted to geometry. Okay, like, which is this one. And then I have a simple grid. My reason for taking the UV uh, project over here is because as I'd mentioned in the previous lesson, the map doesn't really match. Like if you just do a normal UV project, sometimes it doesn't match. So you have to sort of come in here and you know, these are the values that you'll need like minus 90 and minus 90. And then it sort of matches the UV mapping on the, on the height field. Anyways, once you've done that, you can, you know, plug in the low res here and the high res there. And then you can specify, you know, what all you want. So you can specify a diffuse map, normal, roughness, metallic, you know, you can do those things. And then you can also have your, you know, vertex color, AO, thickness, curvature, you know, all of those options. And what's also cool is you have the option to write out attributes. Okay. So this has attributes like the masks that I had made, those are now attributes. So you have like the rock mask and the, the dunes. Okay. So you can also write those out. Like you can click the plus over here and you can just, you know, write out the attribute that you want. So it will write out those things as well. Okay. So I have written those out. So like I have my, uh, I have my rock mask. I have my rocks. I have the dunes over here. Okay, so I have all of this data which I have written out, so I can use those. Uh, so yeah, so you can also do that. Okay, uh, okay so let's just switch over to uh, Quixel Mixer. Okay, so uh, this is again, this is not an intro lesson. If you want like an introduction to it, there are like the Quixel Mixer YouTube channel has got like a bunch of, you know, basic introductory videos available for it. Uh, the nice thing is like, of course, what I'm doing here is fairly simple. So it's not like anything overly complicated. So you don't have to be like, you won't be too confused with it. The setup is fairly simple. You have your viewport, you have the layers on this side, you have the setup stuff. Like, uh, the interesting thing about mixer is it's sort of like a, a mix between substance painter and substance designer. So you can just build textures with it and then you can use those or you can also get in like a 3d model and you know do full 3d painting on it so right now what we're doing is just uh you know just doing texture work so we're just going to keep it to plain if you want to bring in a custom model you can bring in a custom model you also have like some ready-made 3d assets which is essentially you can load in an asset from the mega scan library okay but we don't want that so right now we'll just keep it to plain which is fine you can set up a texture resolution but this can be changed later as well you have the size of your plane you know like what you want so this is currently like one meter by one meter and then you have the display stuff like you what do you want the background to be you want a gradient you want to see the you know the hdr that you're using so you can do those things you have light intensity you have light intensity, you have light rotation, okay. And uh, GPU tessellation for displacement, so you have those things. And then you have like performance options and then, you know, how to export out everything. Okay. And then here you have different options again, like uh, you can see it as a plane, you can see it as a cube, okay. Uh, navigation is like Alt and right click zooms in, zooms out, and then, you know, 
middle click will pan it. Uh, yeah, you have a sphere, you have, you have a bunch of options. And then this is like, how do you, what do you want to view? So right now we're viewing the full shader, but if you want to view like specific maps, you can view the specific maps. It's pretty straightforward. And then this is, if you want to see displacement or not want to see displacement. In our case, we want to. And then you can also preview tiling, which I'll show you once we, you know, once we take in a map in here. Okay, and then uh, this is the different types of HDRs that you have available. Okay, okay. so to start off with, you have a bunch of things up here. You can add a surface layer, you can add a decal, smart materials are a new thing. What we want is a solid layer. Okay, so just take a solid layer, which is good enough to build things. So the problems with uh, Quixel Mixer or the limitations are like two basic things. Like you have, firstly, you don't have any baking tools. Uh, so that's a problem. And uh, so you need you need some other software that will bake it for you. Okay, hopefully they'll add it in sooner or later. Uh, but that's a limitation right now. The other is you can't paint, uh, like what Substance Painter can do is which is, uh, you can do a lot of uh, color manipulation as well. Like right now the problem if you take a solid layer, you have one color per layer. Okay, like you just, that's it. So unless and you're painting, then that's a different thing altogether. Okay, but uh, like you can do gradient remap in Substance Painter, you can't do stuff like that in uh, in Quixel Mixer. Okay, okay. Anyways, we're not worried about that right now. So you take a solid layer, and we don't want to worry about color right now. So I'm just going to take this color and make it, uh, you know, something simple enough. So I'll make it like a sand color, and then uh, metalness roughness. I don't care. Okay, so that's not important. What we want is the displacement map. Okay, so I'll click on load and I'll pick up the displacement map. So let me just, so yeah, so that one. Okay, so rocky height. And then you just up the strength and you'll see your displacement. Now you're not, you're not seeing it as yet because uh, it needs a normal map. Okay, so what you want to do is come to the normals. We don't have a normal map and we don't need it either. What you do is you click generate from displacement. And once you've done that on, you're in business see so now we have our basic uh, texture okay and then as i said like if you click this it will preview tiling so you can see the tiling you can also show the grid if you want to but right now i don't care okay so this is our basic layer so now let's start setting up the other ones okay so let's say i want like a darker shade for you know like the up areas of the dunes so i'll pick in another solid layer and what you want to do is uh, I'll set the color to a slightly darkish uh, or light, let's do a light uh, brown and I'll lower the roughness a little bit so it's a little more shiny and then what you want to do is uh, firstly click like up this button called wrap to underlying so it will like you know wrap it to the underlying layer and you can also define like an opacity for it. Okay, but what I want to do is uh, it has two ways to sort of mix with it. You, it can come from below, okay, which is you can see like it's sort of, you know, mixing in from below, which is actually not bad. Okay, like if you just adjust it enough, it will just peek in through the bottom area. See, there you go. There you go. See, so you can actually like, you know, that's pretty simple. And you can define like a radius for it. And you can also like up like preserve details. So it will try to, you know. Okay, so this is straightforward, like you can also adjust, like, of course, this is for albedo, we don't really care, okay. Uh, but if you want, you can also like set it from above, so it will come from above, and then you can define like the threshold for it, like how it's supposed to come. So you can do stuff like that. Uh, for now, but what you can also do is we can also take a mask, so we can do from above, but I don't want anything on the rock area. Okay, so uh, you can do things like that. So what I can do is I can right click here, and I can say add mask stack because okay, so it'll add a mask and then uh, click here. So you have like two, two areas like this is where you can take some patterns and stuff. And then this is filters. Okay, so I, I'll click here. I'll take a texture map and then I can click on custom map and add image. And what we want is the rock mask. So click open and see, there you go. Okay, so now we are masking like from top but I want to invert it. So there you go. Okay, so now it's coming from top. 
but these areas are masked out. Okay. And then you can also define a range for it. Like this is like levels. So if you want to sort of, you know, like clip the areas, you can do that. So now it is coming from top, you know, like it is coming from there, but because of the mask, it's only like showing up, you know, where the masked out area is. Okay, this is pretty neat. Uh, let's do one. Let's take the base layer and make it darker. Okay, this is this is fine. Um, I think from above is not a bad idea. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, that one. Let's do from below. I think I like from below. Yeah, I think this is this looks better. Okay, so now we can also do the rocks. So I'll take another solid layer. And uh, I want the rocks to be darker. And again, let's like, turn on wrap to underline. And we'll do from above. Yeah. And what I also want to do is I want to give it a little bit of metalness. And I want to lower the roughness. So the rocks are a little sort of shiny. Okay. And I can adjust the threshold. And maybe like up the radius a little bit. And again, I want to put a mask on it. Okay, so it doesn't like go too far below. So again, we'll do add mask tag and click there and take texture map. And we'll take, you know, the rock mask. And so now I can like, you know, now it doesn't matter how much I adjust the threshold, it'll always remain in, you know, that area. What you can also do is if we want, like this is a, this is like a proper Photoshop, you know, layer stack. So I can click here. Maybe if I want to take in like a noise map, okay, so I can take another noise map on top and uh, so you can like, you know, adjust this and we can probably like, you know, mix it with the previous one or you can also do like a multiply. Okay. So, or let's try difference. Yeah, okay, difference is nice. You can adjust the frequency and yeah, we'll make it a little bit rough. Yeah, there you go. See, that looks nice. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. So you can do some nice things with it, you know, like it's not, it takes a little bit of work, but it is nice overall. Like if I want, I can probably do, I can blur it. Uh, you can invert it. Okay, you can invert it, then you can do like a alt and click. So it will only affect, you know, the noise map. Okay, like this is very much like Photoshop and pressing delete will delete it. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's see if we can uh, adjust brightness contrast of just the noise map. Okay, see. Okay, uh, let's do one, one last thing on top of it. This is actually looking pretty cool. Okay, like I can see, yeah, there you go. That looks nice. Uh, shift and right click will allow you to like rotate the environment map, which is very similar to a substance painter. You can also come into the display and we can try turning on shadows, you know, like you can do shadows medium or if we turn it off, see there are no shadows. So we can do like low level and then you can, you know, try to, yeah, this is looking pretty nice. That noise map helps to break up the whole thing. Okay, uh, what I can also do is as a final thing, let's again, we'll do wrap to underline. Uh, let's say if you want to add like curvature to this, okay, this actually looks pretty cool. Like it's like snow. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's do from above. What I want to do is I just want to add a mask which will use curvature. Okay, so which is pretty cool actually. Like what you can do is again add a mask stack and then click here. And what it has, it has like this real time. A curvature node okay like unlike a uh, substance painter which what it does is like it takes in the baked data and then you baked a curvature map from that data and that's what it is using this is actually using uh, this is actually calculating in real time okay so if you do if you do curvature and it has this thing where it can just use like the underlying mix or you can try to use base normals we don't have base normals so you can do this and then uh, you know you can adjust the tightness you can try to do, uh, let's try edges only. Yeah, see, so we have like edges only. And then I can adjust the levels of it. See, so you can do stuff like this. 
or you can try like cavities only and uh, so we can do things like these so this is a nice thing like where it kind of like it it just does it real time which is pretty cool we can do two separate okay like let's let's take this one i don't know what color to keep for this uh, so what i can do is i can duplicate this layer so just press ctrl d and that will sort of duplicate it okay and uh, let's change this to cavities only there you go okay and then we'll have to adjust the levels yeah there you go see so pretty neat overall let's try to up this see if we can go up to 4k even though actually i haven't made i haven't baked the maps at 4k i baked it at 2k so it's not going to work or it's not going to help too much but uh, overall it's nice you know you get some nice little details over here all right another thing that you can do is uh, you can also bring in textures from the mega scans library okay so when you install quixel mixer it will you know install a few things for you but you can also go online and you know bring everything in from the mega scans library because if you're using it for unreal it's all free so you can just download whatever you want so what i can do is let's say if i take sand and let's say if i want this guy here so i can just take desert sand and it will just you know load that up for you and then i can you do the usual thing i can do wrap to underline and then i can adjust the threshold for it now what you can also do which is uh, if you want to sort of you know if let's say i've done this but i wanted to you know want to mix this using like basic photoshop blending modes right like if i want to do maybe uh, like multiply okay or something like that so what you can do is like you don't get blending modes here you get blending modes over here you know like in this tab so i can take the albedo and i can click here and let's say if i want to multiply it see so i can multiply it okay or if i want it to be like max so okay or min Oh that's not bad. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, and what you can also do is we can take this color and maybe, you know, let's let's go a little bit yellowish, you know, like so that it will match with everything that we have. Okay, green is a bad idea. Okay. Yeah, I think this is pretty neat. Yeah, so now you can now you have like, you know, additional, you know, data on this. Plus you can do things like you can like lower the blur underline because it sort of like, you know, softens up the whole thing. and uh, we can adjust the threshold how much you want yeah i think this is okay and then we can also adjust the the height frequency so you have like your high frequencies over here and you have like low low frequencies and you can also define like a threshold for it but yeah so the nice thing about th something like this is you can immediately add like you know additional level of detail on the whole thing without having to you know do anything too fancy so you build your basic uh, that you want and then you take you know some of the ready made shaders from uh, the mega scans library and just you know mix them in over there what other colors do we have no no add is a bad idea subtract hmm that's not bad okay anyways you can sort of experiment with that and see what you get okay so that's pretty much it so you can use quixel mixer for you know building texture data okay or building your final shaders so once you once you've done the height field stuff and you know built your basic uh, you know shader out of it then you can do the final detailing using quixel mixer okay as i said like it's not as fully featured as substance painter as yet but it's getting there you know it's got a couple of things missing like uh, as i said like you can't do gradient remapping and things like that like color data is like you know you have like one color that's it okay so that's a problem and then baking tools are not there but i think once they'll get there you know like it's still in development so once they have those things in place i think it will be a good alternative to uh, substance painter